So yesterday we were talking about the Demonkin, the new Chaos Space Marines, and today Warhammer Community came out with some little, a few rules for the Vanguard Space Marines. The other guys that are going to be in that box, in the Shadow Spear box. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into this here. So first off, we get a nice little picture of the whole crew here. As you can see, unlike the Chaos, the Chaos Space Marines, they're not getting any like fancy vehicles or anything. Unless you count dudes with jump packs, then they do get some. Um, so anyways, as I was reading through this and a bit more of, you know, how the Vanguard Space Marines do it, I was kind of confused because it's like, they're, they're all in the Ultramarines thing, like they're all Ultramarines, but they're fighting more like Raven Guard, which is weird. Are like the Ultramarines trying to be out Raven Guard the Raven Guard? Is that even possible? I don't know. We'll have to ask some Raven Guard about it. So anyways, first off, we have your troops here, which these are not just regular Primaris Marines. These, well, they're never called regular Primaris Marines. They have fancy names for everybody. So these guys are infiltrators. Now, you can see there, it looks like they made like a half-hearted attempt at trying to beat the Chaos Marines at the Spike game. <laughs> Good luck with that. I've had 10 millennia to perfect it. Spikes for days, son. I say try, because obviously they're not succeeding. Anyways, these guys all have little... Looks like they all have little computer gauntlets, like little wrist computers. Not sure what exactly they do. This guy kind of looks like he might be an apothecary. That might be kind of nice. Why don't Chaos Space Marines get apothecaries? Do they just not care about their gene seed once they turn traitor? That is a good question for, for GW. Very good question. Hopefully somebody can answer that. Anyways, if you have any thoughts on that, comment section. I'd love to, to hear your thoughts on it. And also, we see that the, one of these guys is throwing, popping a little smoke grenade. I just kind of like how they just sculpted the smoke. It's pretty nifty. I, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to paint that when they, when they get in, but I'm looking forward to trying. So anyways, as you'd expect from somebody called an infiltrator, there you get to infiltrate. Infiltrators? No infiltrating. So they get this thing... Uh, I think it was actually used to be called infiltrate. Actually, used to be called infiltrate back in the seventh edition days when, like, there were just special rules up the freaking wazoo, even in the core rule book. And I think a lot of them have a kind of similar effects, just different names depending on what army they belong to. So, they said this unit during deployment can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches from the enemy deployment zone and any enemy models. So this gives them like a lot of. A lot more latitude and where to set up, and as I even said here, are great for contesting objectives in neutral or enemy territory early in the game. Because again, you're able to pop up anywhere basically that's outside of the enemy deployment zone and any of the enemy models. Because some of them may be able to do this infiltrate slash concealed positions slash surprise. I'm here. So anywho, so they've got that. Uh, looks like they're. The beta bolter discipline rules is actually going to become just straight up bolter discipline. I haven't gotten really to try it yet because I've mostly been painting since the rules came out. Might as well need to get a game set up at some point. But anyways, came up with a little bit here, and the the uh, their marksman bolt carbine is actually pretty similar to plain old bolt guns, except for the fact that anytime they get a hit roll of a six. Unmodified, so it's got to be like an actual six on the dice. Uh, the attack automatically hits and results in a wound. Do not make a wound result for that attack. This is kind of like a wound, mortal wound light. Uh, mortal wound, you know, you can you can only make like invulnerable saves against those. It just becomes a wound. This you can actually use like regular armor saves, but 
You know, it could come in pretty handy to automatically get a wound on a six. They just hope that they don't roll so hot. They don't get sixes on their armor saves. And since one of the models has a smoke grenade, they have the option of doing using smoke grenades, which is a once per battle thing that they use in the shooting phase. And it pretty much just makes it so anybody that tries to shoot this, shoot them, they, you know, they're obscure. It's the view is obscured, so they must subtract one from hit rolls. So that's actually, that's actually pretty nifty. Uh, and you know, again, these are just like plain old troops. I know the troop options I have in Chaos Space Marines don't necessarily have those kinds of special things, except maybe the lesser demons. But then again, they don't get the Legion keywords. Okay, next up are the Eliminators. And there's three of them, but it confuses me because why don't any of them have beards? Or Gibson Les Pauls? Or cheap sunglasses? I mean, I guess those could count as, but those look actually pretty expensive. So no, cheap sunglasses, they are not. So 41st Millennium ZZ Top, these guys are not. Bummer. Anyways, these guys have these pretty nifty sniper rifles that have all sorts of options for different kinds of rounds you can fire. I guess they get to like reload in between shooting phases or whatever, and they're like, oh, I can do a mult mortis round this time. No, we're hyper fragging it. So I'm not going to really go into too much detail on this, although all these heavy options, I guess it makes sense, snipe, sniper rifles do have a bit of weight to them. Even, you know, 40 some odd millennia in the future. And some of these, you know, do not receive the benefit of cover to their saving throws against attacks made with this weapon, being the Mortis rounds. So that's kind of like getting the Iron Warriors Legion trait. But you can select it whenever you, to use it whenever you want, instead of like an all or nothing thing. So you can all, so that means you have it only when it's really needed. Hmm. Interesting. Anyways, they also have the concealed position ability, like the infiltrators do, and they get camo cloaks, so they get like just all sorts of options for cover. It's pretty crazy. And then you have the dudes with the jump packs. Call them the suppressors, and I'm not gonna lie. Uh I'm with everybody on the internet. I've been seeing this picture where people have actually like photoshopped little trampolines underneath these guys. I can just kind of see why it kind of looks like they're jumping on a trampoline. But to be fair, if you're carrying like this, a big old, you know, if you're carrying like a big old auto cannon, you're probably going to be, I don't know, maybe, you know, poking your legs out like that is actually good for stabilizing load when you land, when you uh, land from your jumps. I don't know. I've never tried it before. I don't know if I want to. No. I don't want to. Mm -mm. So anyways, they apparently they're going to get plenty of extra AP over standard auto cannons with these. It's going to be pretty nah. Sounds like it's going to be pretty gnarly. But they can also you do suppressing fire because they're called suppressors. I guess it's kind of nice that they gave them all names that kind of fits with what they do. You know, like infiltrators are going to infiltrate. Eliminator is going to eliminate, and so suppress and suppressitators are going to suppressitate. So anyways, this kind of mate just keeps a, anybody any uh, if if the, uh, these accelerator cannons actually destroy any enemy any enemy models, the unit that that model belongs to can't use Overwatch until the end of the turn, which is uh, that's actually very suppressing fiery. And then we're going to, besides these, I'm guessing, it's kind of hard to tell. Are these going to be like fast, so fast attack, like most things with jump packs are? Or are they going to be heavy assault? Or are they going to be like a whole new, uh, they're going to fill a whole new slot called fast, fast support or heavy assault or heavy attack? 
fat assault. I, I don't know. I guess I'll have to wait until the until this box set comes out and I get the codex to find out. But I know everybody's saying these are looking these look kind of silly, but you know, I mean, when you think about it, the whole thing of Warhammer 40k is actually kind of silly, and that's part of why we enjoy it so much. It's just everything so ridiculously over the top, and you have dudes and like with dudes with jetpacks and power armor carrying like automatic tank cannons in a battle and just jumping around the place like it's no big deal. Or maybe it is. And that's why they've got like the extra, like the bigger feet. For like, there's probably like a massive shock absorbers in these babies. Who knows? And anyways, uh, going on to the HQ choices, you have, or you have a couple of them. You have the lieutenant or lieutenant, depending on what part of the world you're in, in Phobos armor. Uh, because just like every Primera Space Marine has a different kind of name, it seems like all of their armor has different names too. So anyways, I want to say, since he's got little flippy dudes here, that he's probably with, might be teaming up with a jump pack Marines. Clear backpacks look kind of simple, somewhat simple. Somewhat similar. I'm just guessing. Yeah, because it was deploy via grab, shoot, and gun. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, anyways, yep. Let yet another Primaris Lieutenant. With a Master Crafted Oculus Bolt Carbine. And, you know, a little extra damage than your regular bolt rifles. And no cover from these things. So that's that's actually pretty gnarly. As I'll probably have some extra th extra rules attached to it, attached to these guys, besides just the crazy gun, but you'll find out. And then I actually kind of like this guy, the, the captain, once again in Phobos armor. He actually looks a bit like my brother would, probably would in a few, you know, in another decade or two. Because we just know that Elmer Fudd is going to gain power armor in the next 20, 20 years or so. Yeah. That's, uh, I'd be surprised if that didn't happen, to be honest. So anyways, how can you tell he's a captain, besides the fact that it says in, War in the Warhammer community page that he is a captain, and also the fact that he's holding his gun up like this and pointing like he's giving orders? Because that's what all... HQ units do in the Imperium. Seems like in the, uh, with Chaos, there's a little more variety in the poses. Kind of, sort of? I guess we'll see when they start revamping. I, th I th really think they're going to revamp the entire line. Anyways, going to close out of there. And he's actually got this crazy thing, Omni Scrambler. It's like this special piece of equipment that he has that pretty much... Like it says, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as, as reinforcements cannot be set up within 12 inches of this model. Uh, I'm pretty sure that also that may also include like those with the you know deep strikey type of abilities. So it means they have a little further that they have to set be set up from them. Probably because he's omni scrambling their landing trajectories or something. So anyways, you know that's a handy little feature of his, and then. We have the Librarian. My goodness. I think about it. The Vanguard Space Marines in this box are getting three HQs. And I think that, you know, Chaos is only getting one. But to be fair, we're getting a new Demon Engine. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how these two forces, like, clash. And how they, they synergize with, the, with their units and whatnot. So there's another, another Gander at the model here. The, cl the cloaked Charles Xavier effect where it's just it kind of makes me I almost wanted to actually get him and call him Charles and then have like the master of possession just keep going get out of my head Charles that's going to be a thing that is an official thing in the Warhammer lore 
the librarian is Charles Xavier or some crazy, you know, gothic 41st millennium tweaking of the name. And the Master of Possessions is actually Magneto or Possessito. I should quit while I'm ahead or behind. I should quit while I'm behind on this kind of thing, shouldn't I? So anyways, we get a little peek at some of his his uh, psychic powers. Because the Master of Possessions is bringing back the malefic discipline. Apparently, the it's the uh, these librarians have the discipline called Obscuration. Which generally is just there to kind of... It, it seems like all of them are either there to beef up your troops' ability to hit things from a distance or screw with the enemy's ability to do the to do the same. Castle is like uh, Scryer's Gaze. The target gets a reroll failed hit rolls. And enemy models do not receive the benefit of cover. Wow. These guys have a lot of abilities that say you don't get no cover. They're like, I don't know, like the, the, they're like cover Nazis. No cover for you! And then shrouding. Basically, you pick one of your own units, and until the start of your next psychic phase, any enemy models that try to, t- try to shoot them can't unless they're, that unit is the, cl- is the closest one that's visible. So, you know, usually you can just pick and choose. So that kind of screws things up. And then where you go on to some Warlord traits, which again, you know, uh, add one to hit rolls, the target a specific enemy unit, so that target priority, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, Princeps of Deception, this is, I guess this is like the, this is an example of the Ultramarines, well, the, the Space Marines anyhow, not just biting the styles of che- their own armies, but biting the Gene Stealer cults' of style, too. And here I thought the Blood Angels and the Space Wolves were the ones that bit people in the Imperium. Uh, so anyways, it's all like that. You get to pick up to three fr- three of your infantry units uh, before the ge- before this first turn actually starts. And then you can actually just immediately remove them and set them up again, as described in the deployment section of the mission and whatnot. Uh, pretty similar to some of the stuff that Gene, Ke- Gene Steeler Colts have. Because I guess maybe it's maybe this Adeptus, Adep- uh, Adeptus Astartes are actually starting to learn from their enemies. Maybe learn from some of their own mistakes. Hmm. I know the whole thing still, still kind of seems like they're just, you know, like the all this different space frame chapters, like in in class on battle tactics, and the Ultramarines are basically just like peeking over the shoulder of the Raven Guard. You know, the Raven Guards in the class and just copying their answers. But then again, you get with this, you actually get to decide which chapter of your Vanguard units actually belong to. So maybe you get the box and they do become Raven Guards. So it kind of fits. Like they're just kind of improving on what they've already been doing for millennia. Maybe. Anywho, I'm actually pretty stoked for this box. This makes me even more stoked for this box. And it's actually making me kind of tempted to start playing like Loyalist Space Marines. It feels weird saying that. Like, I should take a shower or something with bleach. It just feels so dirty. And not even the fun kind of dirty. <sighs> so anyways, Shadow Spear, up for pre-order this Saturday. And they've actually kind of teased a little bit of what they're going to do tomorrow. Or they'll be, I guess they'll be talking about how you can take... You can expand... What you get in the Shadow Spear Battle Box and expand it into full on match play armies. So that's going to be pretty interesting. I'm going to be looking at that because I'm actually looking at ways, I'm going to be looking at ways to integrate Demonkin into one of my already established Chaos Face Marine armies. My, my Zinch chapter, my, you know, my Zinch Renegade chapter to be precise. So, anyways, hopefully, 
everybody's kind of sharing my excitement on this too. Uh, again, seems like I'm getting more stoked about like Warhammer stuff than RPGs, even though I still enjoy them. I just don't quite have the energy to. It just doesn't seem like I have much energy to tackle topics relating to that since I'm only involved in like one campaign as a player and it almost feels like that's about all the energy I have. Although I have been discussing doing a one shot for the group in a, one of the systems that I own. It might turn into a full, you know, a full, maybe a small campaign. I don't know, but I figure I can at least do something a little different for the guys. So anyways, what kind of releases are you most looking forward to, whether they are Warhammer-related or even role-playing games? Leave a comment in the se comment section below, and let me know your thoughts. Are the Ultramarines really, like, copying the Raven Guard's homework with this, you know, with these Vanguards, or what? Since, I mean, they are setting it up as the Ultramarines having the first round of Vanguard, so that's just what makes me think of it. Anyways, happy gaming, and I will see you next time.